spermatogenesis is nothing but again that division of the cells will take place right and the chromosomes move into the cells during spermatogenesis hetero means different so male heterogamity males will have either the x or the y chromosome and if it does not receive the chromosome it will become a male which is called as the dro two types of gametes are present wherein 50% of the gametes of the sperm will have the x chromosome So in the previous session we had studied about linkage and recombination and we had also learned about how T H Morgan conducted experiments on the fruit fly that is Drosophila melanogaster and wherein they, he found out that how linkage and recombination works on the chromosome and how it is carried on to the F1 and the F2 generations or the future progenies. So in today's session we shall study about polygenic inheritance so far in your chapter 5 that is the principles of inheritance and variations you had seen the single gene that is inheritance of one gene wherein mendel had conducted the monohybrid cross then we studied the inheritance of two genes wherein he conducted the dihybrid cross but we had not come across the polygenic inheritance so what is polygenic means more than two genes so what happens and what are the examples of polygenic inheritance we shall start with today's session so what is polygenic inheritance so polygenic inheritance is nothing but here more than one or two characters get expressed in a progeny so say for example according to mendel whatever experiments he had conducted in the monohybrid cross so what did he do in a monohybrid cross he had uh, he had selected one single trait that is the height of the plant wherein he selected the short plant and the that is the dwarf plant and the tall plant right only one trait he had considered and he proved that that particular trait is carried as such to the progeny wherein either the progeny will be tall or it will be dwarf or short and when it comes to dihybrid cross what he said was here two characters get expressed how does the two character get expressed what did he consider there he considered the color of a sorry he considered the shape of the seed and the color of the seed so shape of the seed he said that he took two shapes of the seed one is round shape and one is wrinkled shape and the other he also selected the character that is the color wherein he took the yellow color and the green color respectively so that is how he did and he said that the these are carried exactly the same as it is to the progeny as well but it is not always true in nature in nature there is something called as polygenic inheritance wherein more than two characters or intermediate characters can be observed in the population so we shall study about it so when two or more genes they control the traits it is uh which is having distinct alternate forms it is called as polygenic inheritance so two or more traits so the best example for polygenic inheritance is the human skin color so if you see a plant uh, you can see either tall plant or short plant based on the progeny or based on the genetic nature of the parent you can see a uh, tall and dwarf plants but in the case of human beings can you see only tall uh, individual and short individual no there are individuals of different height sometimes up, uh, the father will be tall and the mother will be short but the progeny they may or the progeny when it grows into an adult it may be in between height that is neither short like the mother nor tall like the father somewhere in between height right here that is why it is called as polygenic inheritance what happens is two or more genes two or more genes they will control the traits they control the traits so intermediate traits get expressed in the resulting progeny so it is called as hence it is called as polygenic inheritance and apart from this polygenic inheritance is also influenced by the environment the best example to uh, say about this is the human skin color so human skin color is also influenced by the environment of course it is influenced by a pigment called as melanin so it is influenced by a pigment called as melanin again this melanin is a 
hormone and this melanin uh, it is a pigment it is a pigment and it is controlled by the genes itself apart from this even environment also plays a very important role right why because uh, this environment how it plays a role because when we are too much exposed to sun, our melanin content increases. Therefore, we get a dark skin tone. When we are not exposed too much to our sun, the melanin pigment in us will reduce. We'll get a light skin tone on a, or a fair skin tone. Therefore, environment also plays a very important role. And the best example for this is human skin color. So, I'll explain to you how uh, the polygenic inheritance, how it plays an important role on the human skin color by taking the example of the few genes. So, I shall explain to you by taking the example of the human skin color. So, we know that human skin color, it is caused by the presence of a pigment called as melanin as I had told you earlier. So, this melanin, how much amount of melanin should be produced? All that will be determined by the genes. So, here for to explain this particular example, I have taken the gene as A, B and C. I have just given, it is not called as A, B and C, but for you to clearly understand, I have just named the uh, genes as gene A, gene B and gene C. So, these three genes, now they are polygenic, that is they are more than two genes, that is three genes are involved here, polygenic, A polygenic means more than two genes are involved here, gene A, gene B and gene C are involved. So, this three genes are responsible, say for example, the gene A, gene B and gene C are responsible for how much quantity of melanin should be produced in a human body. So, here what happens is, now these three genes are there. So, we shall see the parents are controlled. The, so, the skin color, say for example, the skin color of the parents are controlled by the uh, gene A, gene B and gene C which is responsible for the production of the melanin. So, now if the parents are having these three genes or if they ha the parents are having polygenic condition which controls the skin color, what will happen in the progeny? So, what is the progeny here? It is nothing but the F1 generation, the first filial generation, right? So, the genotype of the offspring F1 generation will have three dominant alleles. Either it will have AA, BB and CC. So, these are the dominant alleles. So, these are the dominant alleles. So, these are the dominant alleles. So, they will have the dominant alleles or they may have the recessive alleles. So, dominant alleles are responsible for increasing the melanin pigment. Therefore, the color of the skin will be dark brown to black. Okay. And the recessive alleles are responsible for decreasing the melanin pigment. So, therefore, the color of the skin will be fair in color. So, here the progeny can either have because three genes are there. There is polygenes present in the parents that are responsible for controlling the secretion of the melanin pigment. Therefore, the progeny can either have the recessive alleles or they may have the dominant alleles. So, therefore, the offsprings that is the offsprings of the F1 generation, they can either have three dominant alleles and three recessive alleles. So, they may have three dominant alleles and they may have three recessive alleles. So, what happens is some intermediate skin color may develop. That is what is meant there. So, if the male parent has dominant alleles, the rest, that is gene A, gene B and gene C and if they have the uh, genes, uh, have uh, the alleles, recessive alleles that is gene small a, small b and small c, then the progeny can have intermediate skin color. Why? Because both the genes, both the dominant and the recessive genes are being expressed there. J there is polygenic inheritance of the genes from the parents. More than one kind of gene is being inherited by the progeny from the parents. So, therefore, they will have an intermediate skin color. So, they may have a, if the father is black and the mother is fair, somewhere the uh, baby might have a dusky skin color. Can't say. It may have a dusky skin color or it may have a fair skin Skin color or it may have a black skin color can't say. So, that is nothing but polygenic inheritance. So, thus the number of each type of alleles in the genotype. So, 
the number of each type of alleles in the genotype, it is the one that determines the darkness or the lightness. So, how many alleles are there here? Since three genes are involved, gene A, gene B and gene C, they will have allele AA, allele, dominant alleles AA, BB and CC and also recessive alleles AA and BB and CC. So, therefore, the alleles are the one which determines the intermediate skin color in the progeny. So, this is about polygenic inheritance. So, next moving on to one more uh, factor that is in principles of inheritance and variation that is sex determination. Why we are talking about all this is because uh, Mendel, he did not study about the chromosomes. But later on, three other scientists, they put forth the chromosomal theory and later other scientists also uh, provided evidence for the chromosomal theory. That is after that era, after the 1900, that is when the uh, chromosomal theory, people start to know about the chromosome when the advent of the microscope or the improvement in the functioning of the microscope or the technology of the microscope came up. So, that is when people came to know about the chromosomes and that is when they started studying. So, that is why uh, they started uh, determining the, pol they came to know about the polygenic inheritance, they came to know about the uh, honeybees like how linkages and recombination in the chromosomes all that they came to know and that is the time when they also came to know about the sex determination. So, you know that in the male they have the XY chromosome and the female they have the X chromosome right. They were able to identify only after the studies on the chromosome started. So, here Henking one scientist Henking Scientist Henking in 1891, he studied spermatogenesis. So, what is spermatogenesis? The production of sperm. The process of production of sperm in the male reproductive structure, it is nothing but spermatogenesis. So, he was studying spermatogenesis on few insects. So, when he was studying, he observed that 50% of the sperm it got the nuclear content. So, what is the nuclear content? It is nothing but the chromosome. What is there in the chromosome? Genes are there. So, 50% of the genes came from the chromosome that is uh, received a nuclear structure after spermatogenesis where, whereas the other 50% sperm did not receive it. That is 50% of the sperm received the chromosome whereas what is the nuclear content? The nuclear content or the nuclear structure is nothing but the chromosome. So, when uh, Heng King, he was doing uh, experiments on spermatogenesis, what he found out was like uh, spermatogenesis that is in insects, he found out was in the insect, 50% of, the, so spermatogenesis is nothing but again their division of the cells will take place, right? And the chromosomes move into the cells during spermatogenesis. So the chromosomes will get uh, transferred into, a few of the chromosomes will get transferred. So here what happened was 50% of the uh, sperms received the, uh, what is that? Chromosomes, that is a nuclear structure, but the rest 50% did not receive the nuclear structure. And later he thought, okay, what are these? So, he found out that, okay, some of the contents are transferred to the sperm during the process of spermatogenesis. What are those contents? Then those contents look like eggs. That is why he called it as X bodies. He did not know it was chromosomes. He understood that Heng King in 1891 while studying spermatogenesis, he, he understood that 50 in, uh, insects whenever spermatogenesis is occurring, whenever the production of sperm is occurring, the sperms receive 50% of the nuclear content. But he did not know that that nuclear content is the chromosome and therefore he called it as the X body because it looks like X. You can see right the chromosomes it actually looks like a X. So, he said some X bodies are transferred during the process of spermatogenesis. They are moved, moving into the sperms. So, and he called it as the X body. Later on, after scientists, based on this, the scientists started getting curious. What are these X bodies? What is Henking start talking about? So, they started doing various other experiments. So, when they started doing various ex other experiments, they found out that it was nothing but the X bodies are nothing but the X chromosomes. So, X chromosomes, they are present in male as well as female, right? They are present in males and females. 
female they have a extra chromosome that is called as the y chromosome so these are nothing but the sex chromosomes and it, later these x body whatever hanking called the called the chromosomes as x bodies in the year 1891 later it was called as the x chromosomes by the scientist it was called as x chromosome and later it was also when further experiments was conducted it was also observed that the ovum so what is this ovum ovum is something related to the female reproductive structure the egg or the ova produced by the female ovary is nothing but the ovum later on it was observed that in the ovum so what is this ovum ovum is nothing but it is a part of the female reproductive structure it is something related to the ovary of the female so the ovary of the female during the uh, menstrual cycle it will release the ova or the egg so when the ova or the egg releases after the male and the female mating takes place the sperm will meet the ova of the egg and the fertilization will occur so uh, so when the fertilization occurs it will give rise to a progeny that is the zygote will develop and later on it will develop into a embryo and the embryo will develop into the fetus and like that the progeny will be developed so what happens here is when the ova it receives the sperms with the x body it will become the female so i will tell you like the female and the male as you know the female has the x x chromosome and the male has the x y chromosome so what happens now mating is taking place between the male and the female so the male sperm will have x chromosome and it will also have y chromosome right so the sperm of the male sperm of the male it will have x chromosome as well as it will have y chromosome so if the egg so when mating takes place the sperms will enter into the female reproductive structure and it will go and fuse with the ova or the egg that is released by the female right so when it goes and fuses when the sperm goes and fuses with the so this one i'll write it as this is the ova and this is the sperm so when it goes and fuses if the x sperm fuses with the so the x so this ova will have x chromosome so why will it have x chromosome because the female have x chromosomes right only xx chromosomes they have so when it fuses it will produce a female the progeny will be a female female progeny or offspring female progeny or offspring but if this say for example if y i'll take one more ova here having x chromosome then the sperm it will go and fuse having the y chromosome so it has the y chromosome so this will produce a male progeny so therefore we can understand that the male is the one who is responsible to uh, determine whether the fetus should be a female or a male so here what happens as i told you when um, later on when experiments were conducted scientists observed that the ova or the egg that is present in the female when it uh, receives the sperm or when the sperm carrying the x chromosome that is the x body as hanking called them when it fuses with the ova or the egg of the female it becomes the female and those which do not it becomes the male so it becomes the male so this is nothing but the sex chromosome and these are called as autosomes and other chrom so these are the sex chromosomes so what are sex chromosomes those so you know that in the human body we have 46 chromosomes right 46 that is 23 pairs of chromosome total of 46 chromosome so out of the 23 pairs 22 are autosomes because they are similar only the 23rd pair is the allosome that is allosome means they are the uh, chromosomes that are responsible for sex determination they are the xx chromosome and the xy chromosome so that is uh, what is called as so the male sex chromosomes are called as allosomes and the other rest of the 22 chromosomes that are there they are the autosomes so number of autosome is same in males as well as in females as i told you both male and female will have 22 autosomes
right 22 autosome but sex chromosome that is allosome are the chromosomes which involve in sex determination so the male will have the sex chromosome x and y that is the allosome x and y female will have the allosome x and x so that is the difference apart from that all the 22 chromosomes will be autosomes they are similar in nature so this is about the sex determination in general what Henking found out and later on scientists called those X bodies as X chromosomes and they are, the not, they are nothing but the sex determining chromosomes. There are various mechanisms that are involved for sex determination. So once we have understood the sex determining chromosomes that are the XX chromosome and the X and the Y chromosomes in relation to humans, we shall study the different types of sex determination mechanisms or the steps involved in the determination of the sex, how it is done. So, first we shall study the male heterogamety. Hetero means different. So, male heterogamety, males will have either the X or the Y chromosome. So, gametes, gametes. So, the male produces two different types of gametes. That is why it is called as heterogamety. They produce two different types of gamety. So, two different types X, X and X, X and Y, X and Y. So, these are two different gametes x and y. So, we shall study the xx and the xy mechanism. xx is related to the female, xy is something related to the male as you know. So, we shall study the sex determination where shall, wherein we shall study the xx, xy mechanism. So, here male is heterogametic as I told you it has x and y. The gametes or the sperms of the male will have the x and the y chromosomes. I told you few of the sperms may have the x, few of the sperms may have the y chromosome. That is why it is called as heterogametic. So, male is heterogametic and the female is homogametic. It is having only x chromosome. And here the best example for um, heterogamity can be seen in human beings that is when well, you consider the male and the female chromosome and also it can be seen in drosophila. So, human and drosophila are the best example that is why I told you while explaining uh, why Morgan chose drosophila for his experiments to study the chromosomal theory you had learned that almost 60 percent of the genes that are present in the chromosomes is almost similar to that of the human beings that is why Drosophila is one of the important genetic tool that is being used to study the genes. That was one of the reasons why Morgan chose Drosophila or the fruit fly for his experiment. So therefore, this XXXY mechanism can be seen in humans as well as in Drosophila. So here we shall study one more mechanism. So we had studied the sex determination mechanism in humans. How was the sex determined in humans as well as in Drosophila? Males will have males are heterogamete wherein the, the chromosome they will have the X and the Y chromosome and if in fe uh, we can say it is a female if they have a XX chromosome right. But when it comes to certain insects that is uh, grasshopper, cockroach etc. There is a the sex determination mechanism is based on the XX and the XO chromosome. It is based on the XX and the XO chromosome. Here again male insects they are heterogametic why because they have the x gametes and the those without the x chromosome so that is why it is called as heterogamete x o means gametes with x and gametes without x that is male flies they will have the sperms wherein the uh, what is that the the sperms will have the chromosome which is carrying the uh, which is the X chromosome. So, the males will have the X chromosome and some sperms may not have the X chromosome. That is why it is called as XO mechanism. Presence of X chromosome and absence of X chromosome. That is why I told you in the previous uh, slide when I was explaining wherein Henking, he worked on insects, right? So, when he was working on insect, he found out that there are certain chromosomes which are carried, there are certain factors which are carried from the progeny, from the parent to the progeny. That is why 50% of the progeny received the nuclear material that is the chromosome, whereas the 50% of the sperm had, sorry, not the progeny 50% of the sperm had the uh, X chromosome whereas the other 50% did not have the X chromosome they are called as the O 
they are considered to be o they do not have the chromosome that is why so the same thing is carried uh, it is here explained here in xx exo mechanism wherein if the male is heterogametic wherein they have the uh, few of the sperms will have the X chromosome and few of the sperms will not have the X chromosome. That is nothing but heterogametic. And the female is homogametic. That is they have a XX chromosome and all the gametes will have the X chromosome. So that is the ova will carry the X chromosome. All the ova or the egg will carry the X chromosome. And when the fertilization occurs, what happens we shall see. So when the eggs are fertilized by the sperms, having the X chromosome. So, in males, they are heterogametic. Few of the sperms will have the X chromosome and few of the sperms will not have the X chromosome. O means empty. They do not have the X chromosome. That is why it is called as XO. So, here when the eggs are fertilized by sperms having the X chromosome. So, now the eggs here, they belong to the female, right? Females are homogamid so they will have the X chromosome. Now when the fertilization occurs what happens in the re uh, resulting uh, progeny? The Those progenies that have the X chromosome so say for example I'll explain it to you here in the same way. So we have the egg so the egg is there so female in the female insect the egg is having X chromosome. Now, if the sperm comes and fuses with the female insect having the X chromosome, then the resulting progeny will be female. The resulting progeny will be female. Now, here there is one more. We can consider the ova that is the present in the female insect. Now, after mating, what happens? The sperm will come in contact with the ova or the female insect, ova of the female insect. These chromosomes do not have the X chromosome. Therefore, what happens? They will become the males. So, I hope you have understood. So, eggs that are fertilized by the sperms having an X chromosome will become the female and those that are fertilized by sperms that do not have the X chromosome will become the males. So, this is how it takes place. So, the best example is insects such as grasshopper as well as cockroach. So, this type of XX exo mechanism is usually seen in insects and that is the one that helped Hinking to understand that there is something called as X body which was later, later on called as the X chromosome. So, next moving on to the female heterogamity. So, so far we studied about the male heterogamity and the female homogamity. That is the male, they had the XX, they had the XY in the case of humans and drosophila and in the case of insects, they had the XO chromosomes, right? And females, they were homogamates wherein in both the cases they had the XX chromosomes. Now coming to female heterogamity. So, the total number of chromosomes as we know it is same in the male and the female that is male and female both have the 46 chromosomes right. So female pro but in that uh, 46 chromosome or in that 23 pairs the female produces two types of gametes that is what are the two types of gametes there the X and the Y gametes right they produce the X and the Y gametes female produces two different types of gametes this actually don't consider the humans. Here humans cannot be taken as the example. Why? Because in humans, the males are heterogametes, the females are homogametes, right? Males have the X and the Y chromosome, whereas the females have the XX chromosome. But I'm talking about birds here. So sex determination in birds. So in birds, what happens is the females, they are heterogametes, wherein the female produces two different types of gametes. It produces two different types of gametes. So, we shall study the ZZ and the ZW mechanism. Here, ZZ is for the male and ZW is present in the female. So, here male is homogametic wherein it has ZZ chromosome. So, in birds, the chromosome is called as ZZ chromosome. It is male is homogametic having the ZZ chromosome whereas the female, she is heterogametic wherein the chromosomes are Z chromosome and W chromosome. It will have Z chromosome, Z chromosome and W 
chromosome z and w chromosome so the, the best example is birds so here again what happens so now in birds uh, after the mating you know that the over, uh, the egg is produced and that egg is the one which hatches and develop into a bird again here what happens here is say for example the ova is there then the uh, male sperm will come and mate so here it is z this is z it will develop into a female so it will develop into a male and in other case it may develop into a female so that is what happens here the best example is birds next is zz z do mechanism here again zz it is a male chromosome z do the female so zz means homogametic the male is homogametic having the zz chromosome and the female is heterogametic wherein the uh, gamete may have the z chromosome 50% of the gametes will have the Z chromosome whereas the 50% of the gametes will not have the Z chromosome that is why it is called as ZO. Same what I had explained in the previous slide the same thing carries here also but only thing is the there the females were homogametic here the females are heterogametic and rest process and all this almost similar. So in this mechanism the female is heterogametic having Z and Z chromosome and some of the gametes will not have the Z chromosome that is why it is called a ZO mechanism and the male is homogametic having the ZZ chromosome. So next we shall study in detail about the sex determination in humans. So how, what are the chromosomes that are involved here? It is XX and X and Y chromosome. So XX, XY type of sex determination in human beings. So we know that human beings have 23 pair of chromosomes. That is a total of 46 chromosomes. We have a total of 46 chromosomes. When it is in pairs, it is 23 pairs of chromosomes. And out of this, as I told you, 22 pairs of autosomes because they will have the same genes, X genes, X genes. They will have the same set of genes in those chromosomes. Therefore, they are autosomes. And the last one pair that is the 23rd pair in the male and the female is the sex chromosome it is a different it is the sex chromosome which is a you can call it allosome or the, it is a sex chromosome so uh, in female a pair of x chromosome is present that is xx and when we talk about male a x and a y chromosome is present why it is so because we are talking about humans here so during spermatogenesis what happens all these were based on Henking's experiment so we have to give the credit to Henking here. So what happens here based on his experiment during spermatogenesis so what is spermatogenesis the production of the sperms so the males they will produce two types of gametes why two types of gametes because the male has a X and a Y chromosome right so therefore two types of gametes are present wherein 50% of the gametes or the sperm will have the X chromosome will have the X chromosome and the other 50% will have the Y chromosome X chromosome and the Y chromosome so females they produce only ovum with an X chromosome why the female ovum is only with X chromosome because the females have only the XX chromosome right and the sperm is the one therefore the sperm I have explained to you in the previous slide therefore the sperm is the one which determines whether the offspring should be a male or a female so the sperm it is the one which determines whether the offspring should be a male or a female so this is the sex determination in human beings so you can see here the males they have the XY chromosomes so the sperms 50% of the sperms will have X chromosome and the other 50% will have the Y chromosome so here females they have the XX chromosome so therefore it will be XX so therefore here what happens so I'll just put a checkerboard so uh, since we're talking about genetics here also we can put a Punnett square so if I draw a Punnett square wherein x, y, x and x. So here we have xx, then we have xx, then xy and xy. So these individuals will be female. These individuals will be female, then we have male and then we have male. So this is how. So you can see here 
there are chances of 50-50 depending on if the X sperm fuses with the if the sperm carrying the X chromosome fuses with the ova carrying the X chromosome, then the progenies will be female. If the sperm carrying the Y chromosome fuses with the ova carrying the X chromosome, then the progeny will be male. Therefore, what it means is that the male are the one which determines whether the progeny should be a male or a female. So this is about sex determination in human beings. So now let us discuss the sex determination in honeybees. So when, it, uh, when we had talked about the sex determination in human beings, it was decided based on the type of the chromosome, based on the X and Y chromosome in male and based on the X and X chromosome in female, right? But in the case of uh, honeybees, the sex is determined, the sex of the offspring or the progeny is determined based on the number of chromosomes. How many chromosomes the progeny receives based on that the sex is determined in the progeny. So here based on the number of chromosomes the female honeybee will have, so the female will have 32 chromosomes and the male will have 16 Chromosome. So therefore, it is based on the number of chromosome and individual receives. So when the male and the female uh, honeybees mate, based on how much chromosomes the progeny receives, that will determine whether the honeybee, the resulting uh, progeny that is the honeybee is a male or a female. Say for example, if the progeny receives the chromosomes, receives the chromosomes after the mating. So what happens? The honeybees will mate. That is uh, a set of chromosomes will be carried. So when the progeny develops, a set of chromosomes will be carried to the progeny. So if the progeny will receive the chromosome, will have the chromosome, then the progeny will become a female or a worker. And if it does not receive the chromosome, it will become a male, which is called as the drone. So if the progeny, so if the progeny, receives the chromosomes, if it receives the chromosome, then it will become the female. So, so in the female, you know that in the honeybee, there are, there is groups, right? Drones, then we have uh, workers, then queen. So, if it is a female, she will, it will be called a queen and a worker, queen and workers. And if the progeny does not receive the chromosome, it will become the male. It will become the male, which is not called as drone, which is called as drone. So this is how the sex determination occurs in honeybees. It is very simple. So in honeybees, actually, it is based on the number of chromosomes an individual receives, that the number of chromosomes the progeny receives. So the uh, female honeybee usually has 32 chromosomes and the male honeybee has 16 chromosomes. So it is here what happens here is an offspring when it is formed. So when reproduction occurs, well, how the reproduction occurs when the honeybees that is the male and the female honeybee mate, what happens here is the sperm it will fuse with the egg. So when the sperm fuses with the egg, the resulting progeny will develop, right? The re resulting progeny will develop. So if the progeny receives the chromosomes, has the chromosomes, then it will develop as a female, that is a queen or a worker. And if it remains unfertilized, means if, there, if the progeny doesn't receive a chromosome, then it will be a male. It is called as a male. Therefore, it is nothing but the process is called as parthenogenesis. What is parthenogenesis? So, you know that parthenogenesis is nothing but the production of seeds without, in the case of flower, flowering plants, it is the production of seeds without the fertilization. Same here, fertilization will not occur. The chromosomes are not carried to the progeny. The progeny will not receive any chromosomes. Therefore, it will be considered the male drone. So, that is how sex is determined in the uh, honeybees. So males have half the number of chromosomes than the females. So that is why what happens here is, so here females will have 32. Why? Because here all the 16 chromosomes, 16, 16 chromosomes together will go to the progeny. But the males will have only 16 chromosomes because here fertilization is not taking place. Therefore, only 16 chromosomes will be carried to the progeny. That is how it occurs. So, those which have 16 chromosomes will become the male. Those which have the 32 chromosomes, they will become the female. 
So that is about sex determination in honeybees. So the females are diploid wherein they'll have 32 chromosomes and the males are haploid wherein they'll have 16 chromosomes. So this is therefore called as haplodiploid sex determination system since here it is based on the how many chromosomes are received whether they receive the haploid chromosomes that is 16 in number chromosomes or whether they re, uh, receive the diploid chromosomes that is 32 chromosomes the sex in the uh, honeybees are determined that is why it is also called as haplodiploid sex determination system here the males produce sperms by mitosis so and the females hence they do not have a father here what happens here is the males male progeny they produce the sperms by mitosis that is mitosis is nothing but equational division wherein if 16 chromosomes are there 16 chromosomes only will be maintained throughout and in the case of females what happens it is and uh, therefore they will not be able to have sons so in the case of males they will not be able to have sons so this is how sex is determined so more than this, how sex determination occurs is the one that is most important. It How it occurs, it determines uh, based on the number of chromosomes that are carried to the uh, progenies. Uh, it determines whether it is a male or a female. So that is how sex determination is done in honeybees based on the uh, transfer of the number of chromosomes from the parent to the progeny. So here, I hope you have understood this session very well. So we had dealt with the this whole session we had uh, talked about polygenic inheritance and we had talked about how sex determination is done in honeybees in uh, that is uh, in drosophila humans we have we came to know and that is the different mechanisms we came to know and we also came to know how it occurs in insects and how it occurs in birds and in detail we studied how sex determination is done in male and how sex determination is done in honeybees on what basis it is done so in um, Human beings, it is done based on the type of the chromosome, based on whether it is XX chromosome or XY chromosome. And in honeybees, it is based on the number of chromosomes. So this is the difference there. So uh, the session may be understood very well. So we'll uh, meet again in the next coming session. So in the next coming session, we shall discuss about um, pleiotropy then we'll, we shall discuss about mutation so mutation that occurs in DNA so when mutation occurs it leads to a lot of genetic disorders so we shall also study about the genetic disorders and also we shall study about the p degree analysis so all this we'll study in the next coming session so we will meet in the next coming session thank you